A very good morning to you, church. We are glad to be again joining you in your homes as we celebrate this virtual communion service. On this second Sunday after Pentecost, the theme for our service is Jesus tells us who are truly blessed, happy. Scripture reminds us when the prophet Isaiah says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, says the Lord. Since friends, this is a virtual communion service, please have the elements that you have chosen close at hand. As the, as the service progresses, we pray that we would be able to share the communion in your homes together at the same time. Let us worship the risen Savior. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The collect of purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Praying in the words of the collect assigned for this day. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we behold the very pattern of true blessedness, renew us, we pray, in his likeness, that following the path of his obedience, we may share in his eternal bliss. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. We shall now have readings read to us by various members, all of whom are in their own homes, but who have very graciously accepted the invitation to read portions of scripture for us this morning. The Old Testament reading for this morning has been taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, selected verses. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory, they shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I the Lord love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offsprings among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. This is the end of the reading. The second reading is taken from Psalms 119, verses 1 to 6. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him 
with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently, or that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. Glory be the Father, glory to the Son, and glory the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today's reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 3 to 10. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see. We are alive as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The holy reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, from verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us perform our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended the dead. On the third day, He rose to heaven. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the Lord, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our Rock, our Lord, and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, on the second Sunday after Pentecost, the theme for our entire service is Jesus tells us who are truly blessed, happy. Living in a world that is steeped in a consumerist mindset, it's very easy to use those words, I'm blessed or being blessed. Blessing is synonymously used with material comfort and personal success. It's as though everything that pointed to the fulfillment of this would appropriately designate a happy person. The church has also learned to do the same with the use of the word blessed has so often to do with acquiring a posh flat or a state-of-the-art vehicle or the likes of it. The words we heard in the gospel reading also describes those who are considered to be blessed. For Jesus, it was the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, pure in heart, the peacemakers, those persecuted for righteousness sake, those who are reviled and persecuted with all kinds of evil who are called blessed. Jesus would certainly be confused if he would have to live in our times and hear the way we use the word blessed. The listeners of these words of Jesus, however, were different. They woke up to a new way of recognizing certain attitudes which were beautiful, but however, didn't find a place in the rough and tumble of this world. A world that was shaped by might makes right, survival of the fittest hierarchies. Nothing new for even people living in this age and time. In and through these attitudes, Jesus was laying the foundation for a reversal of values. Incidentally, this lockdown has helped us all scrape the paraphernalias of our lives and see with our inner eyes what is actually necessary for our living. Yet these words are smack with a reality that accepts the fact that we are a broken people. Leo Tolstoy, Mahatma Gandhi, Rabindranath Tagore and hosts of many and countless people have found their strength in the words of this sermon. Each of them went on and created a world that was undeniably different from the times they lived in. The Beatitudes are a protest against the times we live in, calling us as a church to build, and to build into our systems a people who were action-oriented, that created a counterculture that reinstates God's concerns, especially in a world which desperately tries to silence those who speak along these lines. To be honest, I quite like the Sermon on the Plain as Luke recounts it. Mind you, it's the same sermon with small variants, but essentially the same in its content. Matthew's perspective all points to a kingdom of heaven that is built. What Jesus promises his listeners about this kingdom is the sheer fact that it is not meant in the afterlife. 
One does not have to clinch one's fist and grit one's teeth as one lives here on earth with the expectation that the reality of these promises would work itself out as a reward in our afterlife. We ought to guard ourselves also if on hearing Jesus' sermon for the poor and marginalized, we feel as though life has spoilt us with privileges almost paralyzing us. Or we might also go the other way around. We could even shrink ourselves so much that we would want to become more and more recipients of God's blessings. Either ways, they are both self-defeating. Friends, however, what we do as responsible members of the household of God is trusting in God and letting go of ourselves. If justice, compassion, humility and integrity is the lifestyle that God would have for each one of us to embrace, we must be able to let go of our obsessions and focus on what we really ought to focus on. Instead of instead, letting go, trusting God would help us accept what life brings us and opens us to. Accepting our basic vulnerability in life is the way forward. The fact remains that most of us are, find it quite difficult, if not almost impossible, to let go of our lives and trust God. To make our lives geared as one that would be able to glimpse the glories that this life affords to give us would require courage in the face of grace. Accepting our vulnerabilities can put us on a path of blessedness where we can get to see God's point of view and not be obsessed with only ours. Jesus' audience on that hillside were disenfranchised people, people who had no rights over their own lives. Or even more, they even did not know where they were heading to in their lives. There were people who were poor. They were heavily taxed with hardly anything that they could save for a rainy day. There were people who were persecuted for their faith's sake. Those people who could not guarantee about the safety, could not even have a guarantee about the safety of their lives. It is to such people that Jesus commissions them with telling them that they are blessed. That's what they already are. It's only in knowing that they were blessed could they and would they be a blessing for others. That would apply to us also. People who are work in progress, knowing that we are blessed to be a blessing. But unless and until we see our identities as already being blessed without any of us doing anything possibly to qualify ourselves for that state, we cannot be a blessing to anybody. Living in an age where everything is seen in, in a transactional term, it means we don't do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly to earn God's blessings. We do all the above because that is what God has ingrained in and through God's spirit in our lives. Just imagine what would happen to our hearts, our churches, our lives, our world, if we offered the blessing that God has made us to our neighbors. What Jesus bears testimony in and through the Beatitudes is God's unwavering proximity in the midst of our pain, our suffering, sorrow and loss. 
God is nearest to those who are lowly, oppressed, unwanted and broken. The first question when we are faced with unbearable pain is, where are you God? Why have you abandoned me? What have, why have you chosen me to undergo such great trials? The Beatitudes only affirm that God doesn't leave us nor forsake us. Rather, if anything at all, God is most present in the shadows of our lives. The Beatitudes are challenging us today. The first challenge that it makes and gives us is where and how are our privileges keeping us from seeking God? When life is on a roll, do concerns of ultimate concerns, ultimate questions have a sense of urgency in our life? Secondly, where have I become so cozy in life? that I have failed to see where God's priorities and promises await being unleashed. What does God expect of us? Well, when Jesus gives the Beatitudes, he gives them a sense, a new sense of identity. He gives them without an ought or a must that they must be doing. He gives them because he thinks that that is the way which leads them to finding their happiness. What does Jesus do before and after pronouncing these blessings? He empowers the meek. He feeds the hungry. He cares for the poor and ensures justice for the oppressed. Jesus embodies all these blessings. The Beatitudes, if they have to prove one thing, it is that blessings and justice are inextricably linked. Jesus somehow worked to bring healing, to bring liber liberation and joy in the people's lives. Even as we see Jesus' ministry now slowly getting revealed to his disciples and the people. If you notice the entire scripture, Jesus is calling his disciples first discipleship. Then what happens is the Sermon on the Mount and then Jesus goes on to commission them by first showing them the blessing that he came to become to them and how they, by being with him, became inheritors of something that was ingrained through God's Spirit on their lives. Being blessed, friends, is not a state of mind or a body. Being blessed is not a condition that shows the propensity of our progression in our lives. Being blessed is not about our prosperity and where it is leading us. Being blessed is a calling to work as a vocation for other people's lives. It is the work of the kingdom our ignorance of this can very easily short circuit our purposes. Many a times, many people have walked through their lives, done what they thought was best as Christians, but missed the entire purpose of their lives. Are you and I missing the purpose of our lives? Blessed are you. And that means each one of you all who are watching this service. Blessed are you, just for one purpose, to build and establish God's reign here on earth. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Intercession Prayer In our intercession, let us join our prayer for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ and our Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray at this critical time in the history of mankind for a quick end to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
for comfort to those who have lost loved ones, for those suffering with a disease, and for all caretakers. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all affected by the Amphan cyclone and other natural calamities. That in your mercy you will restore living conditions destroyed by this calamities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all rulers of states in this and other countries, presidents, prime ministers, governors, chief ministers and all to whom authority is entrusted. Grant them wisdom and understanding to deal with the difficult situations the world presently faces. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray that farming and harvesting be restored and that trade and commerce return back to normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for cooperation among nations of the world, political parties and religious faiths, that peace and harmony may prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church in our country and the world and for its leaders, that the church may be a witness to the love and compassion of Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christian Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant these petitions which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Confession of Sin Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace to keep His commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God who forgives all, who forgives one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you for all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. At this point of time, friends, I would encourage you to have a moment of reconciliation within the family. Think of people whom you may have had differences with. 
somebody who you have lost your peace with. In this moment of time, apart from shaking a hand in the family or giving a hug, think of that person who you want to reconcile in this week. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we prepare our hearts now, friends, I would request you to set aside what you have thought would be your offering for this Sunday. Your offering is not just something that you set aside from your earnings. Your offering is about yourself. Your offering is what you are offering to, to the Lord. And because we earn, we give what we are before the Lord. We pray that your giving would be one in which you would capture the cheerfulness of a giving heart. I pray that you would set aside your offering for this Sunday and offer it to the Lord, maybe seal it in an envelope and keep it so that as and when you think you are in a position to come and give us your offering, you would be able to share it in the household of the Lord. Let us present these offerings as you have laid them aside before you and your family for the service of the Divine Majesty. All things come from you and of your own do we give you, Almighty God, Creator of the world. We ask you to accept these offerings and gifts of bread and wine for the glory of your name and the good of your people, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here, His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of us all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, 
he took bread and gave you thanks saying take and eat this is my body which is broken for you in the same way he took the cup saying this is my blood which is shed for you when you do this do it in memory of me therefore remembering his death and resurrection we offer to you this bread and this cup giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you we ask you to send your holy spirit upon the offering of your holy church gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries filling them with the holy spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise and give you glory through your servant jesus christ all glory and honor are yours father and son with the holy spirit in the holy church now and forever amen we are the body of christ we break this bread that we may share in the body of christ we are one body for we all share in the one bread the cup which we bless is the sharing of the blood of christ his life is in us and we live in him as our savior christ has taught us so we pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to the time of trial but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen the prayer of humble access we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same lord whose nature is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son jesus christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest jesus lamb of god have mercy on us Jesus bearer of our sins have mercy on us Jesus redeemer of the world give us your peace receive the body of our lord jesus christ which he gave for you and his blood that he shed for you remember that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving at this point of time friends for the elements that you have chosen i pray that you can partake of these elements with the other members of your family as we do it we pray that we will be able to offer ourselves in a renewed sense to the lord's glory and mission
Jesus says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Having now with faith received the holy sacrament that you have chosen for yourselves, let us give thanks to God. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you ourselves to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Dear friends, we thank you for joining us, even as we've made another effort to stitch this service together. We're thankful for the many who have prayed and who have come along and helped us physically in putting these services. We want to inform the church that I think most of you all are very anxious in some way or the other as to when would be this building be open for worship again. To clarify any doubts in your minds we pray that you would wait with us have some patience in waiting with us even as we wait upon uh, to take a sound decision a wise decision with the numbers that require to be meeting for any particular place we have 25 people who can meet at a time keeping those restrictions in mind we are trying to formulate ways in which we can very seamlessly and conveniently meet. As and when we will meet, I will inform you like I have been doing so through your WhatsApp accounts when I'll be sending you a message. So we pray that even as we look forward to God, we pray that God would help us take wise decisions so that we can meet at the right time here physically in this body, in this building of worship. Thank you and God bless.